Hey everybody, Josh here with the Speed Chip and Endurance Chip FAQ video. Speed Chip and Endurance Chip FAQ video based on your questions, comments, excitement. Uh, in the comments of the launch video for this product, as well as, my goodness, we have talked to so many of you at events this past weekend and Steamboat Gravel, amazing Keegan Swinson wins on a speed chip, one speed chip into 250 grams of um, secret blend hot melt was the recipe for Steamboat. Alexi Vermeulen uh, in third at that same race. And uh, well, we'll throw up the pictures here. We had our uh, speed chip medals at the race, and uh, we got Keegan, and we got Alexi, and of course, my favorite of our sponsored athletes, Alexi with Sir Willie. Love that dog. Um, anyway, you guys have, one, sold us out of product uh, in some of our warehouses internationally. I mean, the, the response here has just been amazing. So uh, if, if you're one of the people out there who are unable to get the product, uh, please get your name on the mailing list. We will mail you as soon as it is back in stock, wherever uh, it has run out of stock. We expected this to be big. It's been a little bit bigger than big, uh, which, which feels amazing, right, from our standpoint. I think, uh, you know, sometimes you're a little bit off with a product launch or maybe the market, you're not quite where the market is, and this one just feels like, well, I think we're all on the same page. You're as excited as we are. So, Let's get into the questions that we've had, to so the most common ones, uh, and we can kind of work from there. And then at the end, you guys, you know, after you've liked and subscribed this video, put more questions and comments down below, because again, that is what helps guide not only our content at this channel, but also products like this. So question number one, my post-it notes here. Um, can we mix them together? I knew, I knew our astute audience would pick up on this. There are some non, uh, we'll, we'll call them non-linearities in the behavior of these waxes as we, we talk about. So, you know, one of these 0.4% faster, 2.6% faster, each one is cutting your longevity, single application longevity by around 20%. This guy is costing you 0.2% efficiency, but is increasing the endurance by around 80%, and two of them is around 100, per, a little over 100 20%, I think, is the number in my head. Um, it's not quite, they're not quite equally offsetting of each other. So yes, you can add, you know, say one of these and one of these, and you end up with about a 0.2% efficiency gain and about a 30 to 40% uh, longevity gain. You can add two and two. Um, they are diminishing returns, but that would probably put you somewhere in the 0.3, 0.35% efficiency gain and maybe in the 60 to 70% uh, longevity gain. So they can be mixed. People have said, you know, so if, if you can do that, then why isn't Secret Blend just a mix of these, these two in their pure form? Well, one, the paraffin that is the bulk of the wax in the Secret Blend really is serving a very important role um, in terms of both, you know, adhesion to the metal, um, keeping the friction low. There, there's just a lot of nuance there. And we've seen in the testing that, you know, n none of these is like the perfect do-it-all wax, right? And so as we're kind of blending for performance, you need paraffin in there uh, as well for that overall sort of balanced performance. The other thing, quite frankly, is like these waxes are just super expensive. I think the one in here is about five times the cost of paraffin as just the base wax, not to mention we're adding the same two sizes of tungsten disulfide that are in secret blend, but we're also adding a third nano, even smaller nanoparticle size tungsten disulfide into this guy. So it's just a really expensive uh, cast of characters that make this product. This wax is something on the order of like, I think eight or nine times the cost of as the just a wax um, of paraffin. So the, the reason that we don't make the product out of, uh, you know, just these two combined is one, you do need the paraffin in the mix, and two, the cost per bag would be, you know, $120 or something. So this lets you sort of find your own blend and, and use your own experiences um, to kind of tweak and modify as needed without us, you know, locking you in. Um, okay, so that was the, the can we mix them? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. 
you know, the other thing to think about is each of these is 72 grams of wax. Uh, you know, a bag of Secret Blend is 500. Um, you're using a, somewhere below 10 grams per waxing. And so the other thing to think about, you know, people said, oh, it's just making your wax much more expensive. Well, it it is adding cost to the wax, but it is also adding, you know, at least 10 additional waxings per chip that you add. So it's not like, you know, you're going to get the same number of waxings per bag and you've just added cost. You, you are actually adding, well, and then with this guy, you're now waxing, say, half as frequently. Um, so your actual cost per waxing comes down. Um, people want to know, how's it compared to Hot Wax X and can you use it in Hot Wax X? So, Secret Blend with two of these per 250 uh, and one of these is pretty similar in performance to Hot Wax X overall. If you look at the zero friction data, you see that the sort of the weak spot of the Hot Wax X being a graphene product. The graphenes tend to struggle a little bit with wet weather. And so, you know, Hot Wax X uh, had a little longer break in time than normal. And you can add one of these or even two of these to it to cut that break, uh, break in time. But then Hot Wax X, 0% wear in block one and zero and two, zero and three, the only lubricant ever to do that. But then because it's a highly loaded graphene product, we see a jump um, once we add uh, water in block four. If you look at the other products containing graphene and graphene-like compounds, they all have that similar performance. And so, you know, one of the things that we made as sort of a, uh, a judgment going forward was I think that our tungsten disulfide technology and these different wax mixes and blends are going to be a better solution long term than the graphene solution because of this wet weather thing. Truly, I don't fully know. We're looking at it with our, our group at Purdue. You know, is it is it some sort of oxidation? Is it something? I, we don't know the mechanism of why that happens, but you can see with every product that's using a graphene or graphene-like compound, th there's this kind of abnormal wear in block four, and we're not seeing that nearly so much with uh, the tungsten disulfide additive, and we don't, uh, we actually think we can do a lot better than that using uh, different wax blends rather than trying to control for that with an additive. So uh, in a nutshell, you can add one or two of these to your Hot Wax X. It will improve the break-in time. I wouldn't add this to it because the whole point of Hot Wax X is speed, and this is kind of taking you in the other direction. Hot Wax X is also one of the longest lasting waxes ever tested at zero friction, so I don't think there's any need to add endurance to it. Um, but you can cut the break down time or break in time with speed chip. Um, do they offset each other? Good question. Kind of answered in the first. They a little bit offset each other. Um, and if you, you know, if you were to make speed wax and then add one of these to make endurance wax, you've actually added a little speed and a little endurance. You know, I would say up to a point, probably three or four of these per bag of wax, you could probably keep balancing them out kind of back and forth if you wanted, or just add them all in to kind of push up that single application longevity while pushing the speed up uh, incrementally. But the, they're small numbers. And like I said, the more you add, the more it's diminishing returns. So, uh, so the answer there is sort of, or my favorite, it depends. Um, what do either of them do for wet weather? So one of the things we see with wet weather, the more additive in the product, uh, the less well it does in the wet. And I think that makes sense. You know, the additives are there to be very slippery uh, against each other. And they also reduce the adhesion of the wax to the metal. And the problem you have in the rain is the rain carries in grit, which abrades at the wax. And so Endurance Chip has no additive in it. Um, it is the strongest, we'll call it sticking, strongest adhesion to the metal of any wax we've ever tested um, in its pure form. This will improve wet weather longevity, just not quite as much as it improves dry weather longevity. You know, we were debating early on, you know, do we call it a wet chip or, you know, something uh, along those lines. And when you really look at the data, it's more like a like a 15% improvement in longevity in uh, wet weather, which is just not up to the, you know, 60 to 80% that you're seeing in the dry. So yes, as a marginal gain, this improves wet weather performance, but not enough so that we were comfortable calling it, um, you know, a specific wet weather additive to the wax. But if, if wet 
weather is your your thing in your area. I know we get a lot of people from you know the UK and places like that where you have a lot of rain. Uh, Portland, you know, th- this is probably a nice thing to add to the mix to just improve that uh, wet weather longevity even by a little bit, right? Fifteen percent, it's not nothing. Um, we mentioned Visma. People want to know what is Visma using in the time trials, and I'll say that they have used. Uh, at the Tour de France, they were using four of these guys in a ba- into one bag of wax. Um, we played around, and at the time trial we just had at La Vuelta, we actually tried time trialing in pure speed chip with really good success. Um, you know, wasn't a win, sadly, for Wout, but I think third. Um, you know, overall, not a bad day for the team. And it really showed that for, you know, shorter distances, there's more than enough longevity in the speed chip for, you know, I would say up to 40 or 50 kilometer time trial. You can use pure speed chip uh, with great success. Just remember it's pure speed chip and you're going to need to be rewaxing um, every so often. The other one we got there is for track. You know, you can race in pure speed chip on the track. Just remember to rewax the chain, you know, after each race weekend or, or whatever that looks like for you because that uh, longevity is not going to be quite nearly the same as if you've got the uh, secret blend and the paraffin in the mix. Can you use endurance chip on its own? And we are saying uh, no. Endurance chip is so hard and so grippy to the metal that your break in time with pure endurance chip is very long. I mean, you might be talking a hundred kilometers uh, to break the chain in after waxing in pure endurance chip. This is a really aggressive wax. Like I said, it adheres to the metal just phenomenally, but that will cause you problems if you use it in its pure form. And that's one of the reasons that we, you know, in our recipes, you know, don't don't use too much. This one, you can probably go over what we're saying, um, or even, like we said, in some circumstances, use it pure. This one, I wouldn't recommend that. It will be frustrating uh, for you if you do that. Last thing to cover here, a lot of people said, can't wait to see this in the zero friction test. And, you know, uh, we've got a a box of these on the way to Adam to take a look at. But here's the thing I I want everybody to think about, how the zero friction test works. So essentially, he's using wear as a proxy for low friction. And to a point, that's true. But, and we've covered in a, a previous video that we'll drop a link in here below, He's because he's waxing every 333 kilometers, give or take, um, through each thousand kilometer block. One of the things that you're seeing in there is is the single application longevity of waxes that are kind of near that limit. And so, you know, if you've got um, you know a product like this that is going to reduce, say, you go from 350 to 280 or 250 kilometers, adding this. Well, what you're going to see is this will be lower friction through its initial life, but then once it starts to break down and you've got metal on metal, the last maybe, you know, 50 kilometers of that test before the rewaxing, you're going to start to see wear. And so that's where I think conceptually we just have to think about what that test is and how it works. Um, You know, it it is not including a re-lubrication at the end of life of the lubricant, it's at a fixed distance. And so, you know, I would say, you know, if you did the ZFC test with, say, uh, a highly loaded speed chip additive that, you know, say it gets you 150K and you're re-waxing every 125K, you are likely to see zero wear in pretty much all the blocks. Um, But if you're doing it the way the test is normally run and this breaks down at 150K, then Rewaxing it, you know, 333 kilometers. Obviously, you're going to see wear after the end of life of this. So, even though endurance chip is slightly less, you know, efficient, slightly higher friction than speed chip, it will show better in Adam's test because it has life expectancy well beyond the rewaxing point, um, you know, of the test itself. So, just something to think about, um, you know, if. Like if you take speed chip and it shows slightly higher wear in that test, it's not because it's higher friction. It is in fact because it is slightly lower life expectancy. So yeah, but I'm excited to see what Adam does. What Adam finds, his test is always fascinating to me and I always really enjoy talking to him about what he's learned and observed when he does his test. So uh, 
that's all the questions I have today, but I know you have more. So please, uh, again, like, subscribe, tell your friends, drop your comments down below. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you here in a, another video shortly and uh, answer the rest of those questions. Guys, have a great day. Thanks.